You might be wondering why is Heiko in a shower? Today we are going to attempt to fix permanently, temporarily, a cracked acrylic shower pan. As you can see, this here is a relatively simple shower install. It's an acrylic or a plastic uh, shower pan and acrylic or plastic uh, walls around. And uh, initially when I found out that our shower pan was cracked, um, I looked into just replacing everything. The, the shower pan itself is about $300, maybe more, $400, depending on brand, model, whatever you want to buy. Um, and then I looked into the technicalities of how to replace all this. Uh, you know, those shower wall surrounds, they are mounted right to the stud. And then after that, that is installed, then you install drywall right up to it and paint and, you know, uh, texture and all that kind of stuff. So for me, in order to uh, just replace the shower pan, I would have first have to find one that fits our current uh, wall system. And uh, the pan by itself is just 400 bucks, but then you have to tear out some drywall, at least a little bit, to expose the screws that hold the walls on the studs. And then you can take your shower surround out. Uh, and if I go through all that trouble, then you might as well replace everything. And a shower pan plus the wall system runs you around a thousand bucks plus. So nicer brands, nicer design, you know, $1,500, $2,000, depending on brand and whatnot. So a thousand bucks. Then you have to do drywall. Then you have to uh, tape and mud and texture and paint or put tiles around it. Then you might as well um, completely change it, put a shower pan in here and then tile the walls. Different techniques and different things, but you get the drift. It just gets more and more expensive. And um, besides the crack in the acrylic shower pan, the walls are in pretty decent shape. Most of the caulking is in uh, pretty good shape. I've replaced it already once before. Um, and so before I spend all that kind of money and go through all that work, now imagine you cannot do it yourself and you have to hire someone. And then suddenly this $1,000 shower surround with an acrylic uh, pan is gonna turn into two, three grand easily because of labor and all the stuff that has to be done. And then if you want to put a new uh, wall surround in here, you might as well change the fixtures and the plumbing as well because you want to make sure it lasts and it doesn't start leaking behind those installed walls, right? So then, you know, suddenly we're handing out the, the, the big bills here. So before I do all that by myself, of course, I'm a DIYer, I will fix everything in my house myself. Um, we're gonna attempt to surgically, with the least amount of damage to the existing shower pan, try to fix it. I'm gonna change the camera angle and show you what the current situation is. So our plastic shower tub um, is installed with a styrofoam carrier that's underneath here. So the styrofoam carrier is supposed to support this acrylic shower tub. So here, this is the section right where everyone always stands when the water is on and you're taking a shower. And in this section here, you can see next to the drain, we have a couple little stress cracks in the surface. This is just superficially. Um, this will not cause any leaks or anything. And we're not really gonna be concerned with those, but you can see them here. I hope you can. Uh, let me see if I can. No, I can't zoom in anymore. And then um, here is a nick in the surface. That was me with a, um, with a knife when I replaced the, the caulking couple years ago, unfortunately, but this is also just superficially will not cause any leaks. But then just recently I discovered that here is a crack and if I push on this, it actually opens up and you, I don't know if I can, there is flexing going on right in the area where we always stand. And I'm assuming that over time when, you know, 190 pound gorilla like Heiko standing here that I, 
compress the styrofoam carrier underneath and uh, eventually it just created a void under this acrylic between the styrofoam and the acrylic and that was enough of a void that over time you know the same load the same stress the same steps the same this would eventually crack and uh, if we just leave it like this it will crack all the way through and then will cause a water leak and of course we don't want that so um, today uh, I'm not gonna start sanding this entire pan and start painting it because they make epoxy paint that you can repaint those uh, shower pans we're just gonna try to fix the crack and we're gonna try to fill the void underneath with spray foam so I already have the products uh, ready to go and I'm gonna take you along for the process and uh, explain each individual step All right guys, so uh, looks like we got everything together that we might need. Uh, for the method that I have come up with to build up the support underneath the acrylic tub or pan, we're gonna use Loctite tight foam, gaps and cracks. Uh, this claims to have a high density foam structure, a very uniform foam structure. Uh, dries in bright white, which makes no difference to me, but is supposedly is denser than other foam. So we're using this. Um, this will be injected through a couple of holes that I will drill at the end of the crack. So I find the end of the crack, I stop drill it, as they call this in, in the technical world. Stop drilling so the crack doesn't uh, migrate further. We're gonna use some drills, of course. We have a cordless drill, and um, we will use Marine Weld. Uh, this is a two-part epoxy, five minute. This is not the strongest epoxy, but the cool thing is it dries white. So it will not be a color match to the old shower tub here or the shower pan, but it will be in white, and therefore I might not need to do anything other than just fill the, the damaged area that we will send out a little bit with this uh, epoxy. And of course the holes that I drill will also be filled with this epoxy. Of course we need some gloves for that. Uh, I will use masking tape to mask around the damaged area because I don't want to accidentally smear stuff all over the place or even uh, sand too much. I only want to sand the cracked area so we're gonna create a little divot so that there's actually some room for the epoxy uh, we'll also open up this crack a little bit so we can clean in there and that's why we have acetone uh, you gotta be careful you gotta uh, use this in an um, inconspicuous area and test because acetone might actually damage the surface of your shower pan and we don't want that either if that's the case, then I'm going to switch to something else, another degreaser cleaner. So we're going to stop drill this crack here. Then I'm going to use my little um, uh, belt sander, mini belt sander, power file, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this has a 320 grit uh, sandpaper on it right now and just sand a little groove right where the crack is. With the holes that I will drill at the end, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to countersink those a little bit at a 45 degree angle with a sinker, which I didn't bring. And then we have some uh, wooden Q-tips. Once I put uh, masking tape around here, I can use the surface of the masking tape to mix up my epoxy. And I usually just use the wooden end of those Q-tips and stir it. And then I can use the wooden stick to also transfer the epoxy into the area where I want it and then it usually kind of self levels and then just leave it alone. It, I know it's not going to be pretty. This shower tub isn't pretty. It's old. It's six years old, but I just don't want to spend a thousand bucks or more. For general cleaning, we're going to use this wax and tar remover. Uh, removes wax, tar, grease, road film before and after sanding. This is for automotive application, but I think uh, this will also do a good job here. It dries pretty quick. Um, then we're going to drill and then 
I actually kept the acetone around. I'm going to use a Q-tip and uh, I will maybe use inside the, the little void that we create with a sander just to etch the surface so that our epoxy and acetone is as thinner for epoxy so if I etch the surface with epoxy then our epoxy will maybe stick to the repair area better at least that's what I'm hoping lots of flex here everywhere so I'm going to put this one hole that we're gonna make the big one the bigger one right at the end of the crack right here so now I'm already through so this doesn't look like fiberglass back in the days they used to make fiberglass pans but this here is more like a plastic acrylic who knows what the material is some shower tub expert please let me know okay so now I'm gonna get a vacuum cleaner vacuum out the little shavings that are left in there and then we're already gonna do the the spray foaming because that has to cure before I start pushing on here and sanding and um, maybe I'll do the the stop drilling since we're at it and I'm gonna do the stop drilling with a, a finer drill about half the size so there are a couple other little veins of the cracks here and then one is I don't know how it's actually already more than one it's one here and then another one so that also will give us a little bit of some control so if we see the foam coming out so here these superficial cracks I'm just gonna leave them alone I'm gonna send out this um, nick that I created to fill it with epoxy as well all right so vacuum cleaner is the next step Stick it in the acetone and then stick it in the hole. Clean that out in there. I can feel how the plastic gets soft by just doing that. So I definitely don't want to spill the bottle of acetone in here. But it's definitely good for adhesion. All right. So, so now let's see if the straw actually fits into the hole. Yep, that fits. And I guess we have to, where to use, how to, 30 seconds shaking vigorously. Warm enough it should be. It's warm outside, it's warm in here. Here's the I think that should be it. So for now, I think, so that we don't have the foam coming out of those three little holes, I'm just gonna tape over it. And I'm gonna try to 
squeeze as much foam in here as I can because it's soft all around here. I might, it's hard over here, it's no problem here, it's good here, it's good here. If we can spread this far enough, that would be okay. If I can't, I might have to drill a hole elsewhere. Okay, ready guys? Let's do it. Oh, we might want to stop it now because the shower tub is lifting. Yeah. Cool thing is, I mean, the stuff sticks like, like crazy, but we can just cut it off afterwards and scrape it off with a plastic scraper. Yeah, now we have a little hump here in the middle. We might want to shape this back. Just a little bit to avoid too much rice here in the middle. Alright guys, so here we go. Uh, off camera I have drilled another big hole because I felt like there was another section uh, with um, a lot of give. I filled it both with foam, had let it sit all afternoon. Now it's evening, it's already 7.30 at night, but I do want to um, finish up filling the holes that are here with um, epoxy. So that's what we're going to do now. <clears throat> so first I'm going to take the drill bits that we used earlier to drill the holes, to clean out the holes a little bit, so that we actually have some space for epoxy. So that the epoxy has some surface to hold up. Like that. It's a vacuum. So now we're going to use my power file, sand out this crack, sand out this gouge. And then we're going to get going with some masking tape. Clean up everything. So now we have a nice groove here. The plastic kind of melts rather than sand off. Even though I had my belt sander run as slow as possible. So now we're going to use um, some acetone to clean this all up. Just the hole and the groove with a Q-tip that will melt the plastic most likely a little bit, but it's fine.
do a little bit more cleaning with acetone just in this bigger section here because I really want the stuff to stick and to adhere okay just where we ground in this groove here and this one I don't think, yeah, if we melt the surface around a little bit. So, I'm going to get some of the water. Okay, now I'm going to take my vacuum cleaner from last time. Alright, so the reason why I put a little bit more tape here and here and here is that this is going to be the area where I'm actually going to mix this stuff. So that's good. So now we're going to unpack our JB Weld. They give me a little wooden stir stick. Oh, we might as well use it. Usually I just use my wooden, wooden um, um, what are they called? Cotton swaps. Cure, harden, dry, then uh, get you back on the camera here and uh, then we're going to peel this off and take a look at it a little closer. And then maybe I'm happy with it, maybe I'm not.
All right, later. At least the surrounding tape, just like that. Paint job, we have color transitions for paint tape lines. You wanna make sure that it doesn't pull up the paint afterwards. Right, I think that's good enough. Probably might as well do it all the way, right? Yeah, I think so too. We're not getting stuck on my fingers. And then right around the white fingers for the next week or two. Like that. Oh, well, the white is pretty white. And the shower tub is pretty discolored from years and years of water and grime and soap and whatnot. But I think it's stable enough and waterproof that we can live with this for another couple years. 24 hours later, uh, I figured we're gonna finish up this project tonight. I just came home from my day job. Uh, this uh, project here has had 24 hours to cure the epoxy and also the foam here underneath. As you can see, there's quite a significant color difference between the Marine Weld, JB Weld stuff here, uh, which is a marine, uh, it's an epoxy that's specifically made for uh, boat applications, so wherever there's water involved. Um, this here is of course not the end all be all repair of a cracked acrylic uh, shower tub, but um, I would say this is the easiest. So here we had a scratch. Here we drilled a couple of holes to uh, relieve this crack and also to be able to inject our foam. And over there I drilled another hole to be able to push some foam in. And um, we cleaned this all up with uh, gently, carefully with acetone. We ground a little bit of a divot in here so we actually have some room to uh, build up some epoxy. This is of course not smooth. I haven't sanded anything and I don't think I will because the surrounding area here is still pretty smooth and easy to clean and when you start sanding plastic it's just gonna get rough and the rough spots, is, uh, spots are gonna attract dirt and grime and whatnot. So the imperfection in color is of course not perfect, but you know, this is a shower, we're gonna be standing on it, and this is definitely better than spending a uh, thousand bucks in repair parts, just wall and shower pan. Um, of course, there are other repair methods that I've seen on YouTube where people um, use fiberglass to uh, reinforce the cracked area. They also use foam, the foam method, and then afterwards they paint the entire shower pan. And this is still an option, so I haven't uh, um, completely forgotten about the paint option. If this actually holds up, I can sand this flush, I can fair this whole thing, and then we can remove the caulking, and then we can clean this perfectly and sand everything, and then we can repaint this uh, shower pan but uh, for now I just want to find out if this repair with a foam under here um, and drilling holes and then filling with epoxy is actually a viable option. If this starts cracking again then uh, we're going to be right at uh, the start line again and then we're probably going to spend the money and buy wall and shower pan or tiles and shower pan, who knows. Um, so I am making the commitment uh, to you guys to find out if this is a viable and solid solution for a small crack. Yeah, I mean, if you wait until you have a crack running from over there to over here, it's probably not gonna work anymore, but I caught it early, we supported it with this high density spray foam and we're gonna made it, uh, we made it watertight again with this uh, epoxy. So I don't expect this epoxy to have any kind of structural rigidity, just a waterproofing method to fill up the crack. So um, six months and I will make a follow up video and let you guys know, maybe I do it in three. Um, if I step on this tonight, take the first shower in the repaired shower pan and it breaks right through, then I will uh, add this to this video. 
Okay, so this is what it looks like. Close up, a little uneven, but once you stand on this, you're not gonna even notice it. There are a couple bumps in this. All same here. It's, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a method to repair. This one here could have used a little bit more epoxy, but uh, I think it's gonna be just fine. All right, guys, let's close this out. <laughs>